Today we're going to review all the most important topics in arithmetic and algebra on the SAT, such as integers, factors, multiples, prime numbers, exponents, and functions. Integers. So what is an integer? Well, you probably know integers are numbers like 1, 2, 3, and 4. But what about negative 1? Is that an integer? And what about 0? Is that an integer? Hmm. This is where knowing the exact definition of an integer comes in handy. An integer is just a fancy name for any whole number. So is negative 1 a whole number? Yes, whole numbers can be negative. Is 0? Yes, 0 is a whole number too. Integers can be negative or 0 as long as they are a whole number. Write that down, because when a question asks you about integers, it is important to know what they are. Now on to factors. So what is a factor? What does it mean when we say one number is a factor of another? A factor is a number that divides into a larger number with no remainder. You can remember it this way. You know how if you say, okay, money is a factor in my decision. It means that money is a part of your decision. Well, for math factors, it is the same. If a number is a factor of a larger number, it means that number is a part of the larger number, i.e. it can be divided into the larger number. For example, what are the factors of the number 12? Draw a factor tree as on the screen. Factors of 12 are 1 and 12, since 1 and 12 divide into 12 with no remainder. Also, factors are 3 and 4, as well as 6 and 12. So the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Awesome! So what are multiples then? Well, they are the exact opposite of factors. Specifically, multiples of a positive integer are those that have it as its factor. So that means if factors are divisible into a number, then multiples are multiples of that number. So what are the multiples of 12? For example, to find multiples of 12, you would multiply 12 by 1, then by 2, then by 3, and so on. Therefore, the multiples of 12 are 12, 24, 36, etc. Next up, what is a prime number? A prime number is a number that has two factors, one and itself. The first ten prime numbers in increasing order are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29. Jot those down in your notebook and make a note next to it that says, Memorize these numbers. Trust me, SAT test makers love throwing in questions about prime numbers. Know how to recognize them and also make sure you can count them out quickly. That's a piece of knowledge that may very well come in handy. However, let me point out a couple things. Notice that 1 is not a prime number. Why is that? Well, because it only has one factor, 1. Think about it. 1 times 1 equals 1. Therefore, the only factor 1 has is 1. Also, please note that there is only one even prime number, 2. No other even number is a prime number. Any other even number would always be divisible by 2, correct? That's why 2 is the only prime number. Now it's time to learn about inequalities. 
There are so many inequalities in this world. Like when someone is born with perfect hair like Justin Bieber, and someone else is born with hair like Donald Trump. See? Obvious inequality. Well, math inequalities are similar. It's when one side is unequal to the other side. There are four inequality symbols as on the screen. Inequalities can be treated in equations exactly like an equal sign, meaning you can add, subtract, multiply, or divide both sides of the equation by the same number. The only exception is if you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number. If you do this, then the inequality flips over, so the side that was greater than before suddenly is less than now. As you see on the board, when you divide by a negative number, the inequality flips. Alright, okay, let's stop for a second and take a moment to quickly recap everything we just reviewed. If you didn't jot down notes before, jot them down right now. You in the back, man, I'm looking at you. Get that pen and paper out. Number one, a factor is a smaller number divisible into a larger number. Number two, a multiple is the opposite of a factor. It is the larger number. And number three, you need to memorize the first 10 prime numbers. It's not hard. Write them down now. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29. Number 4, an inequality is treated just like equations, except that when you divide both sides by a negative number, then the inequality gets flipped. Alrighty then, that was probably mostly a review for you, but here comes the tricky part. How do we apply this knowledge to real SAT questions? Let's try a couple. I'll give you a minute to complete the question on the screen. Okay, let's go over the solution together. So this is an example of an easy level inequality question. You want to solve for x. First we'll subtract each side by 6. The inequality is preserved and you get negative 3x is greater than 18. The next step is to divide both sides by negative 3. Because negative 3 is a negative number, the inequality flips. It is now x is less than negative 6. Sweet! Easy, right? Well, that's just to get you warmed up. Now let's try a medium level inequality question. I'll give you another minute to solve.
Let's go over the answer. Because there is an absolute value here, you must separate the inequality into two separate pieces. One piece is 3 minus x is less than 2, and the other piece is 3 minus x is greater than negative 2. Notice that the second inequality flips when you set it to negative 2. This will always be the case when you are dealing with an absolute value in an inequality equation. Okay, that's the tricky part. Now let's just solve using algebra. You end up getting x is greater than 1 for the first piece, and x is less than 5 for the second piece. Now the question asks, which of the following is a possible value of x? Well, which of the answer choices fits both pieces of this inequality? Answer choice A does. 4 is both greater than 1 and less than 5. Perfect! Or, another way to solve this problem is to use the plug-in answer choices strategy we learned in math class 1.